What is up everybody? Josh here again and today we have an Icarus Week 153 update. This week we get a brand new weapon, the Flamethrower. We also get a Frozen Wood Vein in the Null Sector, which you see behind me. We'll go over that shortly and some stipulations on that. And also we get a free weekend for Icarus and double XP event. That means Icarus is free and double XP for all prospectors, as well as some new Scoria, Clay, and Obsidian resource packs that are now available in the workshop and so much more. Let's get into it, shall we? Icarus Week 153 brings the Flamethrower, double XP, and actually performance improvements as well as those resource packs and the new Wood Deep Vein. Basically, Icarus is going to be free this weekend. Anybody is going to be able to play Icarus. So if you've got a friend on the fence about Icarus, you can give them a link and they can play it free this weekend. We also get double XP for everybody. And it's going to be until Monday in ZT time. They also have the free weekend bundle, which is basically a huge discount kind of bundle that has all the expansions and it looks like it's 76 dollars for all of them 25 percent off this week the update came a little early because of the free weekend double xp event and the reddit ama that they are doing on reddit they also provide a breakdown of some building optimizations and we get the frozen wood deep vein some notable improvements this week is they added scoria clay and obsidian resource packs to be able to purchase those in the orbital workshop that means you can now build in those materials on any map players can now collect the notes in the null sector mission and keep them read them when you would like so you can actually collect the notes they really nerfed damage to sandworms and land sharks they had a weakness of 21 times to fire now been reduced to two times and if you go to craft a fire extinguisher you now need water for it to be able to be crafted so if you go to your workshop in game or in the workshop up in the space station you'll be able to notice three new resources that's clay you research it for 15 red exotics Scoria, which is 15 red exotics to research, and 30 for the obsidian resource. So it actually costs 350 ren and 25 red exotics for you just to craft 100 obsidian from the workshop. For Scoria, it's 100 ren and 10 exotics, and same thing for clay, 100 ren and 10 exotics. But you can now craft those and use them. We, if you need red exotics, we got a red exotics video we just released. Check it out. We'll have it in the description down below. So we got the Anaris Rogue Arrows. We'll see how many shots it takes to kill a sandworm now. Okay, he's actually taking a lot, lot less damage than before. Definitely not a five shot. So yeah, it takes a ton more shots to kill a sandworm now. Also with the fire extinguisher, you do need water, which is actually giving us one of the very first recipes we need to use water into these benches. These benches can accept water now. And we're just gonna lag our way over here. It seems like after this update, the lag for large structures have gotten much, much worse. And we're gonna connect this to a water source. And now we should be able to make the fire extinguisher without having to have a water source inside of the bench. You can also just stick a canteen or something in there if you wanted to use that instead of wiring it up. That's completely up to you. And items that require water will be automatically filled like this fire extinguisher. And they say this week we're getting some building occlusion optimization. They're talking about why large prospects don't really hold up well performance wise. And they talk a little bit about occlusion pulling. And they talk about how some building meshes are now occlusion and distance cold, giving you the best possible performance. And there's an addition to buildable optimizations. And these are based on your view distance quality settings in the options menu for how far stuff renders in. And they're boasting a two times performance increase. And they say with players with large, heavy hitting prospects should see a tangible performance increase. What do y'all think? I, I haven't seen a single bit, honestly. Comment down below. Has it been better for your large prospect? And this week we get a new flamethrower. This week they're introducing a new weapon type in preparation for some new creatures and bosses that are on the way and flamethrowers now shoot a jet of flame and do continuous damage to anything within the area 
Anything flammable in the world has a chance of catching fire, further adding the destructive power of this weapon. It's crafted in a machining bench and requires biofuel, and it has a handy gauge to keep you updated on how much fuel is remaining. So let's check it out. The flamethrower is in tier three, and you're going to see it right here next to the biofuel lamp right above it. It requires aluminum ingots, electronics, steel screws, and glass to craft, and a machining bench or better. It says sure beats a can of aerosol and a lighter. <laughs> It has a neat little gauge on it. You can see it whenever you have it out in your hands and you can see wherever it's empty or full. And of course you just left click to fire it and it'll shoot flames continuously like this. You can go up to a barrel like this and hit X to empty it and then fill it all the way back up again. As you can see, it's full now. Burn, baby, burn. Yeah. And it could be filled up in any of the composters. You can just place the flamethrower in there and it'll sit there and slowly fill it up. It doesn't look like you can use a can of any sort in your inventory to actually fill it back up again. I don't know if that's just something that they've overlooked, but it doesn't look like you can use a can to fill it up, but you can definitely fill it up in this and fill it up whenever you have it out in your hands right here. You could also carry this barrel around and then just like place it down anytime you need to refill your flamethrower. You're going to be doing a lot of flamethrowing. And then just pick it back up again. Let's see how well it does against the drac here. Not bad, actually. Forever to kill that red back though. Two, yeah. That doesn't do anything to him. Okay, okay, that was some fire animals. Let's let's see if we can do some Arctic animals now. Yeah, it wasn't too great, but it wasn't too bad either, so. Time to meet your maker. Good on wolves, actually. Oh, boy, now what we got here? Looks like we might the jam our thumb up his butthole. Oh, we got, a, we got a wolf that joined. Oh. His cousin. Oh, micro stutter. Noise. I'm trying to find a polar bear or something around here. And finally, the ultimate test of the flamethrower. One flamethrower, one polar bear. Lots of fire. Ah, he still hit me. One eternity later. Not suggested. Oh, God, lag. <laughs> Running low. Oh, I'm out. If I had a full one, I might have actually been able to do it. That's okay, though. Yeah, not highly suggested at all. One thing I forgot to mention about the flamethrower, it does actually need biofuel for you to craft it. So you do actually have to have to, like a can. I use an MXC can or just any kind of canister will work. And then you can go ahead and craft a flamethrower. But you do have to have a can of fuel that will use about half that can of fuel to craft one flamethrower. See how it does against interior wood. Instantly on fire. Just instantly on fire. Dang. And Smokey, I'm sorry. I don't want to set the world on fire. I just want to start a flame in you. In my heart, 
I have but one desire And that one is you No other will do Yeah, it will catch woods on fire and stuff like that, so be very careful. I mean, unless you're trying to get charcoal from trees or something, but uh, yeah. You can light the whole forest on fire now, if you wish. But of course, other structures aren't really that flammable, so you actually can, you can damage them still, like this. You do some direct damage to it, but you can't actually catch them on fire. So anything that can catch on fire normally in Icarus will catch on fire with the flamethrower. Annoying bush, catch it on fire. Bunnies underwater, catch them on fire. Deers, catch them on fire. And let them spread some more flame. Ah, oh, you. No. Oh, you can't spray it underwater, though. You can't on top of it. <laughs> Pernaris's, catch them on fire. Maybe Tenerises catch them on fire. Shoot me! Ah! 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 Time for your weekly bath. And that is the glory of the flamethrower and what it's about. Lasts a pretty long time too, actually. This week we also get a free weekend and double XP event. Basically that means the base game is free for everyone to play. So if you've got friends or if you watch this broadcast and don't play Icarus, then you're more than welcome to play Icarus free of charge the base game that is and that will last until monday in z tom there's also a double xp event meaning that you get double the xp that you normally get throughout this whole weekend till monday and they also have the ultimate icarus experience at a great discount they say the free weekend bundle above this week we get frozen wood deep veins the null sector from the frontiers dlc now has received a new deep vein which is frozen wood vein and these are ores that can be drilled up with the ice borer and allows for wood without having to track all the way down into the null sector with wood so basically this gives an option for you to get wood in the null sector now they will provide frozen wood when drilled and the frozen wood needs to be heated up in a furnace campfire or any heat based benches or devices and this converts the frozen wood into wood now i will say that if you're going and trying to find this on your existing null sector this week you will not be able to do so uh we we went through a lot of hours and i do mean hours guys so please like the video we spent hours of researching going through four different prospects and was unable to find this deep vein in our current prospects so we had to start a new open world and get to the null sector. You can only find this currently this week on a new open world or new null sector mission. And I'm assured this is a mistake and will be fixed in the future. So let's check out the deep veins, shall we? Also, just to let you know, when you log into Icarus, you'll see the double XP event now on. This is what the frozen wood looks like in the null sector. Whenever you find one on a new open world for now and hopefully an existing next week. And this is kind of what it looks like. All you gotta do is take the ice borer, put it on your bar, and then you just have to access the inventory of the ice borer and put a fuel canister in there. Fuel. And I'll sit there and drill up some frozen wood. Looks like it does about 2.2 per minute. Now this one we found it right here at F12. This is a common spawn according to the devs. And this is where you can get some frozen wood. And the frozen wood recipe, it says frozen wood drilled from an old root system beneath the ice. It needs to be defrosted to be useful. We're just going to place a little campfire down here and throw the frozen wood in there. 
and some fuel and you can see it's now producing wood from the frozen wood and it looks like it's taking forever in the campfire <laughs> and as soon as it pops out it's going to pop straight into the inventory of box here and now we can either stack it and add it to that pile or do whatever we want with it it's now just wood so yeah that's the new frozen wood deep veins and just to let you know you can use the deep vein scanners as well for frozen wood all you got to do is just toggle over to frozen wood and it will tell you exactly where frozen wood is whenever you're close to it just like so Kind of an interesting step back on the null sector. I kind of believe that the null sector was hard because of the resource scarcity. But now that we have this, I feel like it's still kind of hard because honestly, this is slow and it does seem like it costs a little bit of gas to do so. But you could be passively farming some wood up here in the null sector now if you so wish to do so. And next week we're getting cows and milk. We're getting the new animal and resource. This is the cow and milk. And you can purchase a frozen calf from the orbital workshop and then raise them up into a cow. Cows then need to be fed and watered to produce milk. With that new milk resource comes a range of new recipes and so more food. And this is the first step they've made towards animal breeding. In the future, you can expect bulls, chicks, roosters, and lambs. And they'll release it whenever they're happy. Got the change log here. Let's go over it very briefly. It says they're adding about six frozen wood deposits to the ice sheets biome. And you can return the biofuel canister to orbit again. Workshop one. So I'm guessing the MXC. And other than what we've already went over, that's pretty much it for the new content section. Let's go ahead and, and take a look at the fix section here. It's basically all the collectible items in the null sector there. You can pick them up, the logbooks, audio logs, stuff like that. And you should be able to do it on existing prospects. It looks like whenever you reload. Yeah, 21 times down to a two times for damage for the sandworm and for the land shark. And we'll take a gander at the future content section. Looks like they're working a lot on the assault rifle and the biolab consumable to workshop the biolab currency setups for future bosses and biolab inhalers looks like a gargantuan frenzy tonic <laughs> black wolf trap and setup talking a lot about the rock golem and it looks like it's gonna roll it looks like it's gonna eat rock clusters when it's low on health and the great hunt juvenile-esque creatures great hunt device and bench talking about the cow skill tree this is interesting adding movement layers for the swamp ape Adding a new item, condensed exotics, that is carried in the utility slot. And you'll convert condensed exotics into exotics in the rock golem juvenile again. And it looks like rock juveniles are going to be able to have oxide, copper, coal, iron, and gold infused added modifier stats and icon. And they're adjusting loot of rock golems to drop ore related to their infusion. It looks like we'll have a rock golem trophy, but still not a land shark or a sandworm. And that's it for this change log. Just to let everybody know that this Friday stream will be on YouTube and we will be streaming at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time like normal. But this Saturday, we're going to be doing a stream on our Twitch channel. Yes, we have a Twitch channel. I'll put a link in the description down below. It's twitch.tv slash late underscore night underscore stream. And this is what it looks like right here. We'll be doing a little over a six hour stream so everybody can get all of the once human skins and stuff. So that will be this Saturday at 9 p.m. And that's going to be it for this video. Don't forget, if you like what you see, to like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Subscribing will get you weekly Icarus update videos and content videos whenever those come out as well. Go check out our new Ren and Exotics video if you're interested in that. And hopefully, we'll see you next time. Peace. Oh, no. No. No! And the fish! Not the fish!